So this is Will Prowse from about two months ago. I'm gonna post this video in the future. These are server rack lithium iron phosphate batteries. And this thing's heavy. And on the front, we have the main positive and the main negative terminal. And I've used this interface on other batteries. So first you turn it on right here. And if it doesn't turn on all the way, you just have to press the reset button. We have the communication ports. There's also DIP switches for changing the settings. We have a run light and alarm light. Typically, if this SOC meter is lit up, you're good to go. Just gonna bring it over to the workshop. So now it's connected, so let's see if it's working. 15 amps, so it's actually part of the system now. And the top cover is easy to remove. Oh, wow. This is a nice battery. You guys, look at how this is organized. And this build quality is perfect. Every single wire is labeled. These are welded terminals. We have temperature sensor right here and right here. There's four total on this pack. This BMS is very familiar. It's the same type that's used in the Energy Tech battery. Oh, look at that. There's a pre-charge resistor. So this is a high quality pack. And these are brand spanking new cells. So yeah, incredible build quality. This is fantastic. I don't think you can find better. Like all of the crimp connections, everything on the board, everything looks really good. Balance plug is even glued in, conformal coating, inductor, everything's glued down. Like this is a perfect battery build right here. I don't see a single issue. And they're using large conductors for the main supply. How in the world? No wonder these sell out so quick. I really wanted to get my hands on one, but I never was able to because they were always sold out. There's even lock nut washers for every PCB. Like everything is so nice. This is fantastic. This is what batteries are supposed to be. This is so nice. Oh, that was dangerous. I just imagine my dad yelling at me right then. He's a mechanic, by the way. I'm pretty sweaty too, so this could shock the heck out of me. Before we put this together, I have to say that this is the new standard. At this price point with this build quality, this is the best you can get. Off the top of my head, I don't know of any other battery. I just try to think of them and yeah, there's nothing else that compares to this. If we could get a million of these batteries, I bet they would sell out because everybody would want them. I would pay my own cash to buy like 10 of these. And I've seen other batteries with the same interface, but this is the best build quality of them all. Every single one that I've tested. These are gonna be the future for people that wanna build their own solar power systems. There's no way that you can be this deal. Anyways, I'll stop talking. This I'm just excited. I love this. Now it's all back together again. Something I could say is because it's in a steel box, you cannot use this in a high humidity or a marine environment. If you scratch it, it could rust. But if you take care of it and you mount it securely, you could use this in pretty much any environment you want. But if you splash water on it and this is not sealed, that could be problematic. And this battery lineup has its own battery charger, but I only have the 48 volt model. And this is a 24 volt battery, so we can't use this one. But this thing has 95% efficiency and I use it on my main system all the time. So we're gonna use my Ames Power 12 and 24 volt battery charger instead. This one's good, but it's not as efficient. And this model has a pre-charge resistor, so if you're connecting it to a charger or a high capacity inverter, you don't have to worry about damaging this battery. You literally just connect it and that's it. You don't have to use a pre-charge resistor at all. Now that the charger is connected, let's turn it on by flipping the circuit breaker. Now we're charging at 36 amps, so we'll come back in a couple hours when it's done charging. So a few hours later and we hit high voltage disconnect, so this battery is fully charged. Now we're connected to the CBA4 and amplifier system. And now the test has started. And sadly, this test will take 10 hours. We're doing a 0.1C rate because we can only pull 19 amps at a time. So we'll come back tonight and see what the results are. So now it's late at night and the test is finally done. And we pulled 200.9 amp hours in 5,187 watt hours. And something I've noticed with these server rack batteries is they pull exactly how much they're rated for. Typically with most lithium iron phosphate packs, I'll pull three, maybe upwards of 6% more than its advertised capacity. But with these, for some reason or another, they pull exactly what they're rated for. I mean, that's less than half of 1% that it's pulling over. So it did exceed this test, but yeah, just by a small amount. 
Now let's discuss how long this battery should last for and what type of warranty it comes with. This is considered their budget model and it doesn't come with a display screen, so this one only has a five year warranty. But if you spend $250 more, you'll get a display that shows you a percentage for state of charge, it will show you the individual cell voltages, and it will have a cycle life counter. And that model with the display also comes with a 10 year warranty. But some people do not need those features at all, and this basic model still can communicate with a grow watt inverter. So with this communication port, you can actually change the cycling bandwidth so that this will have a very long cycle life. Now let's talk about the cycle life data for these batteries, and specifically these cells. So if you were to cycle this from 0 to 100% every single day at a pretty fast rate at a 0.5C or a 2 hour rate, you're gonna get 3,500 cycles. But if instead you were to cycle down to 20% and then you charge up to 100%, you would get 7,000 charge cycles. But again, that's at a two hour or a 0.5C rate. And obviously, if you're using this for solar, you're never gonna charge and discharge that fast. Keep in mind that those figures are estimating when this battery will degrade cycle life count to 80% capacity. Even when you hit those figures, you can still safely use this battery for as long as you want. And these cycle life figures are nice to know and it's nice to know that you actually have cells that are tested, but when used for solar, these should last a very long time. I think calendar aging will kill these before cycling ever will. So if you wanna make these batteries last a very long time, keep them in a cool ambient temperature environment. And second, try to charge and discharge at a lower rate. The best way to accomplish this is to make a large battery. The larger your battery, the longer it will last. Now let's talk about the price. Considering everything that we've tested and that we've seen, these are selling for 29 cents per watt hour. So these are ridiculously cheap. I mean, compare them to any other battery on the market. It's just mind boggling. Even an SOK battery is more expensive than this, and this has a better build quality. And it comes with a circuit breaker and a state of charge indicator, which the SOK does not come with. And if you compare it to more expensive batteries, this is a fraction of the cost. If you compare this to a Simplify or a Battleborn or something else, this is literally a fraction of the cost. So I mean, think about what you're getting here. This build quality is better than all of those batteries and it's much cheaper. And a lot of distributors understand this and I'm pretty sure in the next year or so, everybody will be supplying these. These are gonna be a very popular battery pack. Also, previously this was called the Guild battery, but now it's called the EG4 and they're gonna have a massive inventory. Previously, everybody wanted the Guild battery, but it's sold out of stock in like a couple weeks. But with the new model, they're gonna have thousands of these every single month. Now let's talk about the competition because I've got like five distributors telling me that they're gonna have pretty much the same exact battery in their warehouse. They still have the cheapest price and the best warranty. So Signature Solar is doing very well in that regard. But my new goal is to find a battery that can beat this battery. So far, this is like the new standard. This is the future. And let me just say now that I wish these were available in all-in-one systems when I was first starting out. I mean, you don't even have to build your own system anymore. You get a battery like this, you have two wires, you can have a shunt if you want, um, have a T-class fuse for 48 volt, and then you have an all-in-one system. You can build a full-size system in a couple hours, and it has some serious power. You can power your house, you can charge a Tesla, you can mine crypto, you can do whatever you want. And it's much cheaper now. This is cheaper than an SOK battery, and the SOK battery was so cheap that people couldn't believe the price. So the prices are dropping and the quality is actually improving. So very impressive. I mean, I really don't have anything bad to say about this model. In other packs I'm testing right now with the same interface and these same terminals, they all seem to work just perfectly. I just don't have any problems with them. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys can find something wrong or if you guys have an issue with this battery, please let me know about it either in the comment section of this video or on the forum. The distributor actually said they had two returns of this battery, but it was from shipping damage. They said that they haven't had a single BMS failure or any issue with these packs at all. So yeah, so far it seems good, and yeah, we're gonna end this video, but if you guys disagree, please let me know. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video, and thank you so much for watching. Bye.